Hi, this is George with 573 Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing mucosa associated lymphoid tissue or MALT. So let's get started. Um, so first, let's define the difference between mucosa versus serosa. So a mucosal membrane, also known as mucosa, is a membrane which lines cavities and organs consisting of epithelial cells which are continuous with the outside of the body. So the eyes, mouth, nose, ears, vagina, urethra, gastrointestinal tract, anus, um, will have mucosal membranes. A serous membrane, or serosa, is a membrane which um, is also made up of epithelial cells, um, specifically a type of epithelial cell called a mesothelial cell, um, which lines organs and cavities, and these are not continuous with the outside of the body. So examples would include the pericardium, the pleura, peritoneum, and the tunica vaginalis. So the pericardium covers the heart, the pleura lines the lungs, the peritoneum covers abdominal organs, and the tunica vaginalis covers the testes. So mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue, or MALT, are concentrations of lymphatic tissue which are found in many submucosal parts of the body, including the gut, respiratory tract, and salivary glands, and they contain many immune cells, including B or T lymphocytes, macrophages, and plasma cells. To sort of shift gears, um, because we are going to be talking about tonsils here in a bit, um, this is a section um, which very well shows the anatomy of the pharynx. So the pharynx is made up of the nasopharynx, oropharynx, and the hypopharynx, or the laryngeal pharynx. Um, and I just have this here because if you don't understand um, what the pharynx is made up of, understanding the tonsils is going to be pretty challenging. So humans contain four types of tonsils. Um, so near the nasopharynx, we have the adenoid or pharyngeal tonsils. And we also have the tubal tonsils, which are not um, pictured here. We also, and these are uh, the adenoid or pharyngeal tonsils as well as the tubal tonsils are gonna be made up of respiratory epithelium. At the oropharynx, we have palatine tonsils, which are stratified squamous epithelium. And behind the sulcus terminalis, which is behind the tongue, so here's the tongue, and here's the lingual tonsil, we have stratified squamous epithelium, and those are another type of um, tonsils. Um, the tonsils that you characteristically think of when someone has, uh, for instance, a throat infection are going to be um, your palatine tonsils, which are near the uvula, or the um, little ball thing in the back of your throat that makes you throw up if you press on it. This is just another view of the tonsils where you can also see the tubal tonsil. And so the palatine tonsils are what you characteristically, characteristically think of as being enlarged, but remember we have the pharyngeal tonsils as well, um, located near the nasopharynx. This is an H and E of the tonsil. So all the, um, so different types of tonsils have different types of epithelium, um, but for the purpose of this lecture, um, it's really just best to appreciate a couple of things. The first is the aggregation of lymphatic tissue, as well as the epithelium, which could be respiratory or um, squamous epithelium, depending on which tonsil it is. And then we have these little um, crypts or um, little grooves in the tonsils. This is just a zoom up of the stratified squamous epithelium, as well as the lymphoid tissue um, found in the tonsils on H and E. Next, we're gonna shift gears and talk, talk about um, an example of malt, um, which is found in the intestine. So we have the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum, and these are the parts of the small intestine, and we are going to zoom in on the ileum. So the different parts of the small bowel are actually characterized um, by certain things um, that you'll get into later. Um, but these aggregations of lymphoid tissues are called Peyer's patches, and these are only found in the ileum um, re regarding parts of the small bowel. So if you see aggregations of lymphoid tissue um, in what is intestinal epithelium, so if you zoomed in here, they would be um, simple columnar epithelium, that should uh, really clue you in that you're in the ileum. This is an example of um, malt in the appendix. So the area that I'm sort of um, surrounding right here, this is going to be our um, 
Molt. And uh, this is going to be a characteristic finding of lymphoid tissue in the appendix. And we can also see um, heavy glandular epithelium. And so heavy glandular epithelium um, alone, as well as um, what looks like uh, gastrointestinal histology, um, wouldn't necessarily clue you in on the appendix because the duodenum also has a lot of glands um, that you can visualize. But the presence of this um, lymphoid tissue in the appendix, in addition to these glands, um, really clues you in on this being the appendix.